You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Gold, crude oil, corn, soybeans, and more. With so many tradable products, the futures options market can be an intimidating place. How can you possibly keep track of the latest trading developments across so many different products? Don't worry. We've got you covered. Welcome to This Week in Futures Options, the program designed to help active futures options traders stay on top of this ever-changing marketplace. Each week, we'll break down the top trades, hot products, volatility explosions, and much more. This Week in Futures Options streams live every Friday at 3 p.m. Central, so be sure to check out our live stream via the Mixler app, that's M-I-X-L-R. Or join our live chat room at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. Whether you're an experienced veteran or a newcomer looking to separate the wheat from the lean hogs, this week in Futures Options has the information you can't find anywhere else. This Week in Futures Options is brought to you by Quick Strike Options Pricing and Analysis Software. QuickStrike offers powerful and flexible options analysis and pricing tools via an easy-to-use web-based interface. View prices on outright options or spreads with comprehensive page-level analysis controls. Build trades, manage risk, or explore historical volatility. QuickStrike has you covered with market data reports ranging from open interest to the term structure of volatility. Quick Strike is the perfect addition to your trading toolkit. Learn more about Quick Strike at Bantix.com. That's B A N T I X.com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Quick Strike One. That's Q U I K S T R I K E One. And now, get ready to break down the latest futures options trading activity. It's time for This Week in Futures Options. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever-exciting, ever-expanding Options Insider Radio Network. If you like this program, we've got a lot of great archives of this program for you guys to check out, including, of course, a lot of other programs you may be interested in. If you like volatility, volatility views, of course, if you're into more of the equity and index option side of the fence and you're on the retail side, then, of course, uh, Option Block is the way to go, or perhaps Options Boot Camp or Options Playbook Radio. We've got a lot of those great programs for you and a lot more. Easiest place to find that, including our other Futures Options program, the Long and Short of Futures Options as well. Easiest place to find all that. The mothership, the flagship, the optionsinsider.com. While you're there, you can click around. No shortage of ways you guys can find our radio content there, of course. The call out on the right, the player right there in the smack middle of the homepage, or, of course, via the Insider Radio Network tab, top left corner of the page. And either way, however you get to our stuff, we would love to hear from you guys, of course, including via the app stores with our mobile app or via the usual outlets, the iTunes, the TuneIn's, the Stitchers, the Google Plays, the so on and so forths, all of that fun stuff. And again, however you hit us up, make sure you hit us up with questions and comments. Uh, we love to hear from you guys. This is usually the part of the show where I introduce my cohort, my partner in crime, the yin to my yang on the futures option side of the fence, Mr. Nick Howard, the founder of Bantix Technologies, the creator of quick strike unfortunately nick got called away at the last minute he definitely preferred to be here listeners trust me but uh, he got called away uh, so we're going to kind of soldier on in his place make sure if you are following along with the show and again i didn't mention at the top of the show if you can't join us every friday 3 p.m central 4 p.m eastern we'd love to see you there in the old uh, chat room i know today is a, a particularly challenging day 
uh, for those of you who do want to join us live or participate in our polls or things like that, because um, congratulations, first off, to those of you who can, because you've won the internet today, because everyone else is pretty much knocked out of the park. Uh, the, uh, there's a big DDoS attack going on, still a rippling effect throughout most of the internet, so a lot of people are complaining they can't get access to our stuff, or, or to Twitter, or Netflix, and all the other stuff, and I, I certainly understand our site's up and running, we had no problems, but a lot of the intermediaries that people use to get to us, like Twitter and others, are having a lot of problems. Uh, so uh, if you made it, congratulations, <laughs> you, uh, you, get the, you get the gold star for tenacity uh, for today. And for the rest of you joining us after the fact, well, we'll see you next week for the live version. All right, so let's get into it and break down some of this week in futures options. All right, let's kick things off in one of the product areas that really seems to be near and dear to our hearts uh, these days. And pretty much every episode, we break it down. We're not going to do pretty much, not going to change it up this week as well, because it is still, uh, it is still capturing a lot of the mind shear and still delivering a lot of volatility and activity uh, indeed throughout the week. That is indeed WTI and all things crude oil. It's been another interesting week. It's funny, if you guys are following along, or maybe even after the fact, you're listening to the on-demand version, and you're going to go over and generate your own report over there at CME Group, at cmegroup.com slash Twio this week in options. And if you're doing that, and you're saying to yourself, hey, I want to, it looks like when I run this report, uh, it was a pretty quiet week for crude from an underlying perspective. Uh, you would be right. Net to net, it was a pretty quiet week. Most of the futures unched or up half a handle or you know not much to speak of so if you just looked close to close throughout the week you would say oh it was a pretty quiet week of course everyone who's watching crude this week knows anything but <laughs> it was rocking and rolling uh, pretty much all week long starting more really with the uh, with the big rally in the middle of the week on Wednesday uh, we saw a lot of reports coming out of the government that a uh, crude inventory uh, getting hit there's draws on it really pretty much in six of the past seven weeks, that surprised a lot of people who didn't really expect that. There's a lot of things like maintenance from refineries and other things that go on this time of year that typically would tend to push back against that a little bit. Uh, we also saw oil stocks getting depleted by about 26.5 million barrels in the past seven weeks. That also a surprisingly large number, even when you factor in things like we've seen the hurricanes on the East Coast recently and other things, that that can usually come in and just wipe out a lot of uh, supply and production right there. Even when you factor into all that stuff, uh, it still uh, it was surprising a lot of people. So, of course, stocks down, uh, maybe in higher draws than you think. Crude rallies, it was up over 2% uh, on Wednesday, hitting its highest level in about 15 months. So maybe the crude bulls, were they were thinking that was the moment. That was the inflection point that we've been talking about here quite a bit on this show for some time. That was the moment when the worm was going to turn, crude was back, calls were back in favor. All was right with the world, at least if you're a crude bull. And then not so much when Thursday came around, because what happened? Well, crude taking it on the chin, dropping a little over 2% on Thursday again. So pretty much wiping out all of those gains uh, we saw on Wednesday. So a lot of sturm and drang, a lot of back and forth. And at the end, what do, we, what do we end up with? We ended up a week that is pretty much net unched from a futures perspective, uh, which is, again, goes to show the importance of frame of reference. If you just look close to close, beginning of the week, end of the week, or one week to another, uh, you miss kind of all the fun in between. And there was a lot of fun going on this week if you were out there trading. Uh, open interest up another strong week for WTI, up about 6%. Uh, this week, or just about there uh, this week, so another 100,000 plus contract, 106,000 to be precise. So all this back and forth uh, causing WTI to light it up yet again. You know, there's a reason why it's top of our show most of the time, because it's, it's got headlines, it's got movement, it's got volatility, it's got kind of all of the above. Uh, we saw, this is kind of a bit of a funky week if you're looking at the report over there, semigroup.com slash Twio, because of course we had uh, the front month rolling off uh, this week, uh, which kind of uh, maybe skews the perception a little bit. But overall, net on the week, 71% uh, of the volume we saw going up was in the, the new front month of, uh, of DEES out there, which we had about, yeah, about nearly just a tick under 400,000 contracts going up out there. Again, 71% of that volume. Uh, that does a creep. We did touch on this, actually, if you tune in next week on our Long and Short of Futures Options program that we do with our friends over there at CME. We do touch on this topic a little bit on that program. We talk a lot about energy there. But also trying to get some feedback on why there's so much volume 
in a front month contract like this. So clearly there's a short term interest in crude, and yet that hasn't really accreted to the weeklies. Is there a structural issue, a product issue, a contract spec, something along those lines, end user issue that is preventing that? And it's an interesting kind of thought question. We're trying to probe the answer. I know a few of you have written into us uh, with that question as well. Got some interesting, I think, uh, responses to that. Check out LSFO next week. Uh, you can hear that for yourself. In terms of vol, despite the fact that we had a lot of uh, back and forth this week, it was a volatile week. Net implied vol was pretty much down uh, across the board, down about two handles uh, throughout the term structure. Uh, two points, I really should say. Handles and vol. Not really the same thing, even though it does apply. Uh, but two points really across the board out here in uh, vol, the vol landscape. When you're talking skew, though, uh, skew uh, getting up, getting bit up a little bit across the board. Again, you can break down the quick skew for yourself if you're playing around in the quick strike essentials. I'm not sure. I don't think they offer that in the uh, slash Twio version. There's only so much they can do on one page for you guys at the login to see. Uh, the rest of that stuff, though, the essentials is free. And uh, check it out for yourself. And again, the skew is up aggressively, up more in that front month portion, which is really where the lion's share of the volume was up nearly a full point. Uh, that was kind of uh, a factor of the foot put vol kind of uh, coming up a bit aggressively while the call vol coming down after that initial rally kind of faded. We see the calls are fickle out here in WTI. They get some love, they get some love, then it fades. If the rally doesn't sustain itself, uh, the calls fade and uh, the bulls kind of just retreat. <laughs> and we saw that yet again. And that combo uh, ended up having a net vol increase from a skew perspective, at least uh, across the board. Net vol, of course, was down. Skew up. A little bit of a different beast. Looking at what uh, was lighting it up this week, what was leading the dance out here in WTI, a very active week. You know, before we, when WTI was hovering around the 45 handle or so, it was that kind of ongoing dance between the 40 puts and the 50 calls. We've broken through that range now. We're north of the 50 handle and the 51 to 52 uh, far out there in May or so, 53 even, uh, on the future. So we're north of the 50 handle now. So now it becomes, it seems like the new the new area is the 55 strike, actually. Both the puts and the calls, which is kind of interesting. You might think it'd be 50-55, but no. We're seeing a lot of action. Uh, the number one with a bullet this week was the D55 call. About 35,000 contracts uh, going up out there this week. And interestingly enough, you know, you look at the breakdown, we obviously saw a good chunk of that on the rally on Wednesday, kind of, kind of again, going back to that, you know, the, when the bulls are there, they're there in force, and then they retreat. About 15,000 of those 35,000 contracts uh, going up on Wednesday alone, the rest kind of spread out fairly evenly throughout the week, even a decent amount on Thursday, about 6,000, given the uh, aggressive uh, sell-off, of course, some of that could have been closing from Wednesday's more op optimistic, shall we say, uh, paper uh, going up out there. And number two with the bullet was the uh, Dees, uh, Dees 55 uh, out here put with, actually, I'm sorry, it was the 45 put. We, uh, we, they, mis <laughs> they, mis they mistyped it there. It was a Dees 45 put with about uh, 27,000 contracts. So again, interestingly, because you'd think the 50 put would be, uh, the 50 strike would be kind of where that new demarcation would be, but nope. Uh, to at least this week, anyway, it was the 45 put taking up all the oxygen in the room with about 27,000 contracts. Again, Wednesday being the most active day, even though the big sell-off came on Thursday, about 10,000 contracts on Wednesday, and only 8,000 on Thursday when we retreated uh, pretty aggressively. So again, interestingly, how that paper is unfolding, and then we go out again. Uh, number three are the DS 60s with about 24, nearly 25,000 contracts. That one fairly evenly split between uh, Tuesday and Wednesday with and a, and a good chunk today, about 7,300 contracts today as well. So uh, interestingly enough, and then tying it up, number four, the D50 put with about 20,700 and some change, about 10,000 of those coming on Wednesday. And interestingly enough to know a lot of that paper opening out there. So uh, interesting, maybe new positions uh, being carved out there on the uh, 50 put strike looking here at and we always kind of debate before the show what should be our, our crazy trade of the week we look across a bunch of different products and uh, we kept coming back to these <coughs> excuse me they're a little bit a uh, little bit farther afield and a little bit more optimistic uh, but still kind of reflecting maybe a resurgence in some bullish sentiment we're always kind of watching the wings in a lot of these products like WTI to kind of see some interesting edge cases. And uh, we saw some popping up 
this week in WTI opening paper, all opening paper, and not that far away either, the Jan. So the Jan, 75 calls, trading nearly 1,200 contracts this week, uh, all opening uh, across the board. So, you know, we've seen some farther off months do some strikes around that range. Uh, but to Jan, which doesn't, isn't that far off in the, in the future, uh, that's a pretty aggressive chunk. So we're going to keep an eye on those, keep an eye on that strike, and see if perhaps that open interest grows, if that volume grows. I did, we did hear already this week some, you know, the, the oil prognosticators, of which there are many, uh, coming out and speculating on $70 a barrel crude pretty soon. So that could be feeding into some of this uh, 75 strike level. But still, 75 uh, by Jan is a pretty aggressive outlook. We haven't seen a lot of other people flocking to that. So uh, 75 calls uh, opening. We'll see. Keep an eye on that strike. We'll see if that continues uh, to open as we move on to our next product here on the old on the old desk. I'm surprised by this. By the way, we did give you guys a... Uh, a uh, poll to play along with, a pop quiz for this week, but more of a uh, not really in the quiz so much as it was a we want to know what you guys are thinking in terms of what our surprise product should be. We had a few suggestions for you, and then you guys could also suggest the ones yourself. Again, <laughs> only the faint of heart, only the, I should say, not the faint of heart, the strong, the courageous could make it through to that quiz today, given all the issues uh, with Twitter, but it seems like uh, the, if you do want to vote, you still can uh, Twitter.com slash options. Got a little bit more time in the show here before we get to our surprise product of the week there at the end of the uh, at least the first segment here. Let's move on to the shiny stuff, the uh, the precious metals. By the way, those of you out there who are always writing in saying, how come no love for uh, for the industrial metals? I did take your case up to uh, to folks at CME on LSFO, and they're, they're doing some interesting stuff to try to get the precious, uh, non-precious stuff, I should say, a uh, little bit more front and center for a lot of uh, people out there. But still, you know, it's going to be hard to get the grandma from Iowa to uh, trade a 10 lot of copper or, or even some of the other less, uh, less sexy metals out there, gold and silver, still captivating a lot of uh, the audience as well as some of the other precious metals out there. And let's turn our attention to gold been another uh, interesting uh, time frame out there after you know some interesting rallies and some sell-offs gold having a bit of a mild rally this week up about 10 handles net uh, on the week out there still in that mid 1200 range middle mid, mid to high uh, 1200 range depending on where you're looking out there on the old futures term structure uh, given the uh, that movement vol was kind of scattered kind of mixed not really a huge uh, directional move except for the front month, which is effectively a weekly right now, so you can't really call that volatility again. That's more, that's more in the gamma part of the equation. But again, net vol not really uh, developing much here uh, on the week from a gold perspective. Skew also a relatively unched. Uh, we saw the puts getting a little bit of a bid, the calls getting a little bit of an offer, and net kind of uh, we're seeing not much here uh, from a skew uh, perspective. Unless you go a little bit farther out, all the way out to like April next year, got a little bit of a, a little bit of juice to the to the skew. But otherwise, we're still looking at that kind of uh, funky smile with a call bias, which has kind of been the shape for a little while out here. And crude, given this week's rally, maybe not entirely unwarranted. Again, uh, front month where the uh, really front front week at this point is where uh, the action was about 42 percent, so a little bit under half of the overall volume going up this week, coming in that uh, Nov contract that's going away fairly soon. About uh, about nearly 2% increase overall net uh, from an open interest perspective. I'm looking at what was carving it out, it was the put side, the 12 half puts out there in Nov that were leading the dance to the tune of about 5,000 contracts and some change out here. Again, spread fairly evenly. Uh, throughout the week, there was no one signature day where these puts were, were lighting it up. It was pretty much leading the charge uh, from pillar to post all week long. Followed number two by the Nov 13, uh, no 1300 calls here, which were uh, fairly active as well. About 4,425 contracts, about half, 2,200 and some change coming on Wednesday of this week, so the rest kind of scattered, so the lion's share really coming on that Wednesday, so we got the no 12 half puts and 1,300 calls reflecting maybe a little bit tighter uh, risk reversal than we've seen out there, and then Deese wasn't to be forgotten, no, Deese actually accounting for about nearly 30% of the volume this week, about 29% to be precise, and the Deese 13 halves taken the number three spot with about 3,742 
contracts uh, to be precise out there. About half of that coming on Thursday as well. So the latter half of the week accounting for the lion's share of that volume. And again, you guys can play along with this. Follow along. Generate your own reports. CMEgroup.com slash Twio to do just that. And as the results of our poll are in, at least, <coughs> excuse me, for now, and uh, for those of you who could who could get access to the poll, it is amazing to see so much of the Internet just laid waste today. Uh, but that said, it was NatGas winning our poll for what should be surprise product of the week. So interesting stuff. Let's pull them up. You guys can do the same things if you're streaming live via Mixler or if you're listening after the fact. Again, semigroup.com slash Twio. And then just click on NatGas. And you too shall see uh, what we can find uh, out here as well. And there's a couple of different flavors of this product, but uh, you want, obviously, <clears throat> excuse me, the, uh, the Nat Gas out there. In the first column, that's where the lion's share, the European, if you will, uh, that really is where the lion's share of the volume is going up. And this week, a pretty active week as well as we're seeing uh, the futures off somewhere in the three and a half to nine uh, percent over there in the front of weekly again because it's it's effectively a weekly at this point even though it is the uh, the nove contract uh open interest this week also fairly aggressive up about five percent so i can see why all of you out there were were agitating for uh, nat gas to be our product of the week this week our surprise product of the week uh front month is where oh again kind of front week the lion's share of that activity went up about almost 53 percent of all the volume this week going up in that Nove contract. Uh, Vol, effectively, even though we saw some uh, big moves out there, uh, Vol kind of mixed uh, across the term structure, uh, that front kind of monthly slash weekly portion uh, up aggressively. Again, we talked about Vol in that front week, so we won't belabor that again. Uh, uh, second month up a little bit as well, a couple of handles, and then you, you start going farther out the term structure, Vol actually coming off a little bit. So kind of reflecting that unique structure we see out there. Uh, kind of like an ag in that sense, the nat gas. There's a very defined kind of flow out there in terms of the months and the cycles that are hot out here in nat gas when it comes to uh, different types of, of, of structures in the product itself. And uh, those tend to dictate how the term structure unfolds. Seeing some of that unfolding out here uh, this week as well. Skew itself was off a little bit, much more aggressively uh, in that front month slash week, off about a point uh, versus the farther off in the term structure, you go off that effect uh, a little bit mitigating. We saw the calls coming in a bit, but the puts are uh, rallying a little bit as well. So they tended to offset themselves a little bit farther out on the near term. The calls weighing a little bit uh, more heavily on the equation. Uh, number one with the bullet this week were the Nove three puts. That's the three even uh, puts out there. Seen about approximately 34,000 those bad boys going up this week, so fairly aggressive levels. Not surprisingly also to see it kind of concentrated around that uh, even strike level. We see that a lot. Uh, these even strikes just captivate the imagination, even though the product is higher. Uh, the future is higher, I should say. And even and seeing that product going up there, and despite that fairly sizable amount of volume, uh, we saw it, it was distributed fairly evenly uh, throughout the week, so there was no one day that really uh, dramatically drove the lion's share of that volume pretty even across the board. Number two, again, to know the Nova 290 put, uh, that's 2.9 out there, uh, with about 26,600 contracts. Uh, this one has a little bit more pop on Thursday, about 11,000 of that nearly 27,000 coming on Thursday of this week, so a decent chunk going up in that one day and then number three we got the dece three put so again that three strike captivating the imagination with about nearly twenty three thousand twenty two five or so uh, going up uh, this week a lot of opening paper on this strike which is kind of interesting uh, so yeah a lot of opening paper and also fairly evenly split with a, a decent chunk about seventy five hundred or so coming on tuesday uh pretty anemic today only nine hundred coming out so it was definitely leaning more towards the earlier portion of the week where the lion's share of that volume uh, was going up. So NatGas is an interesting product. I think this is one we're going to start factoring into uh, our, uh, our, our equations, our scans a little bit more going forward. We've seen a few of you guys uh, agitating on behalf of NatGas, and it is perhaps that time of year where uh, NatGas becomes a little bit more interesting and relevant, so we'll keep an eye on that, see how it evolves. Uh, meanwhile, though, speaking of you guys, it's time for you guys to take the reins with some of your feedback here on our Futures Options feedback segment. 
It's time for your questions, comments, and insights. It's time for Futures Options Feedback. Submit your questions at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, stocktwits.com slash options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com. You can also submit your feedback via our Options Insider Radio Network mobile app, available for iOS, Android, and Kindle Fire devices. You can even ask your questions live every Friday at 3 p.m. Central via our Mixler chat room. So grab the Mixler app or just search for Options Insider at Mixler.com. That's M-I-X-L-R.com. All right, everybody, welcome to the Futures Options Feedback segment. Again, the portion of the show where you guys take the reins with some questions, some comments, some insights, all sorts of uh, fun nuggets. You can hit us up all the ways our friend just mentioned, including via the live. I know it's a challenge for you guys to do the live today. We understand. We got some questions there. Apex Fun uh, mentioning uh, Solar City options. They're amazing right now. Wrong show, <laughs> Apex Fun. We appreciate the insight, but that'd be probably be more suited for an option block tech program. Not getting into the Solar City uh, as much on this program, but your sentiment is appreciated. We'll save that one maybe for another show. As we move on to this comment here from uh, from Jay Jay Javich, <laughs> uh, he or perhaps she she suggesting an alternative for our surprise product of the week. Uh, they say, how about coal for a surprise product? Seems to be doing more volume, question mark. So maybe they're asking us if it's doing uh, more volume. Well, we can find that out. Uh, Jay Vich we'll can pull up coal here on the old Quick Strike platform and look for ourselves. The problem with coal, and one of the reasons why we didn't probably choose it for this week, and also I think we'll save it for an upcoming episode, is that you guys can see for yourself if you go into uh, the coal segment of Quick Strike there, it's got, let's say, a, a preponderance, an embarrassment of riches, if you will, in terms of the different product types. Uh, you got Appalachian 2, AP2, a Cal. It's just quarter. It is, there's a lot of different ways that this product is kind of carved up. And uh, finding the right areas that have the most appreciable volume that are interesting to talk about on a program like this is a bit of a challenge. I think we need to put a little bit more work on it than just kind of doing it on the fly here. So your suggestion is noted. Mr. or Mrs. Javich, I think we'll factor in crude for a future show. Oh, not crude, coal, excuse me. Uh, if not uh, if not for today's program, because, uh, yeah, we could spend a lot of time parsing the various nuances of this contract, and uh, I don't think we have time for that on this program. Good suggestion, though. I think uh, maybe for maybe next week we'll, we'll dive into some coal. We were talking coal earlier this, this week on the LSFO show as well, so it seems like uh, coal is suddenly becoming a, uh, an interesting an interesting topic area, whereas in the past, I can probably count on one hand the number of inquiries we've received on coal. So uh, interesting stuff as these product categories continue to evolve. Let's move on to this one here from, from N. N. Melanson. Molinson, he or she asks, why aren't there options on stock futures? Uh, well, you can look at this a couple of different ways. But most of the ways you can look at that, you can say pretty much that there are. Obviously, there's uh, futures on stock options for indices over there at CME Group and others. So you can do S&P and all the major indices there. I have a feeling, though, you meant single stock type futures. So your Apples, your Facebook, your Googles. And uh, the good, easy answer to that question is there are as well. Uh, it's maybe a little bit different than you think uh, because the, the futures in that category are single stock futures. Uh, they're put out through a company called, you may not be familiar with called One Chicago. Uh, One Chicago is actually, as the name implies, uh, kind of a aggregation of what the time was the three Chicago exchanges, so CME, Board of Trade, and CBOE, uh, kind of getting together for this one Chicago exchange. They all pretty much had pieces of it, even though I believe CBOE had the lion's share of it towards the end there. Uh, it's still running, obviously, but it's a different ownership structure, I believe now. And what the goal was there was to create what they refer to as single stock futures. Uh, the pitch, at least the way it was pitched to me at the time when I was still on the floor of the CBO, was the lion's share of their business was going to come from market makers like myself who would use that underlying at the time I was in Intel uh, to hedge your options positions. And there was a lot of pros to it. At the time, you had limitations on when you could short. You had to wait for an uptick. 
these futures didn't have that. There were margin uh, benefits as well. So a lot of benefits to hedging with that rather than the stock itself. And that was a dramatic use case. But clearly, I'm mentioning hedging the options with it. So that was a use case. So even though One Chicago doesn't list its own separate options, it doesn't need to. There is a huge universe of listed options out there that you could trade on these names that they have single stock futures on. I believe they have single stock futures on most of the, the major liquid equities that you would probably want to trade. So check them out over there at One Chicago if you are indeed so inclined. Start trading, let's say, uh, futures on an Amazon or something like that, and then trade options on there. But a long answer to that interesting question is that there are. So rejoice, Mr. or perhaps Mrs. Uh, N. Melanson. And all right, here, we got a time for... One more. Let's see if we can get one more in before the internet breaks all around us. Uh, let's one comes from, oh, the, the creatively named Tom. And this would be a good question for Nick. He's not here, so I will try to answer in his place. Uh, he asks, does Quick Strike include uh, the commitment of traders reports? And the answer, I can give you that one, is yes. If you go to the semigroup.com slash Twio, you're not going to get it there because that's kind of just the, the static Here's the reports for the last week. And you can play around with it. You can change the products and things, but you don't have the, the depth of functionality that you have on the full QuickStrike platform. For that, you need to log in. And I'm fairly certain, I know you can obviously do it on the pro version. I'm fairly certain you can do this on the essentials as well. If you log in there, uh, the easiest place to find that would be, good. again, semigroup.com. All the stuff goes through there, slash QuickStrike, Q-U-I-K-S-T-R-I-K-E. And you could get a login. You can create a login. It's free for uh, Quick Strike Essentials, which is their, their, they call it their pared down version, but I've used it. And it's, they I give Nick a hard time all the time because he gives away a lot to you guys uh, for free. And I do believe the Essentials version includes this. If you log in, let's choose your product. I'm in, uh, I'm in coal right now because that's what people are asking about. But you can hit click market dashboard there on the top there, an extra intraday activity, futures and info, all that stuff. You will see a, a drop down come up. And on the right there, right above the Twio report, which is a report we use to do this show, is commitments of traders. Click on that, and that will, of course, give you all that data. If you're not familiar with the COT reports, listeners, it's put out there uh, by our friends at the uh, CFTC. They show kind of the net commitments of different types of traders, speculators, hedgers, etc., and how what they're holding essentially long or short, bullish or bearish options and futures positions. It's a useful indicator. It's not my first choice because it's a lagging indicator so you have to look back a couple of weeks to see what the data was but that said it's a useful data point and if you want to find it it can be hard to find elsewhere if you want to find it they put it in there on the quick strike platform for you guys so you can thank nick and his team for making something else available for free for you guys all right that music means we come to the end of another fun, a solo episode of Twifo this week, but I know Nick would rather be here, and he'll be back next week for more fun stuff. But before we go, I kind of just mentioned how you guys can use it. Nick's not here, so I'll kind of do his plug for him. We use QuickCheck a lot here. It's the reason we do this show with those guys, and I think their tagline says it all, which is effectively all the stuff you can't find in one place. So if you're a futures options trader, you're looking for analytics, you're looking for balls, research, commitment of traders, all the stuff we were just talking about, you can kind of find it all there, and the best part is they make most of it available to you pretty much for free. So if you want to kick the tires easily, semigroup.com slash Twio. If you want to log in, semigroup.com slash QuickStrike. You can log in through there. Just go to search for QuickStrike, Q-U-I-K-S-T-R-I-K-E, via Google, and it'll take you to a place where you can set up an Essentials account. You can do it there as well. And then the Essentials, again, all that stuff's free. Kick the tires. And if you like some of the more uh, high-end features, you can always upgrade down the road. But kick the tires for free and see if you like and we like having you guys join us on the program so we hope to see you guys next week for more questions more comments and more of the general fun maybe some more crazy surprise surprise product suggestions whatever you guys want to throw at us we'd love to hear from you and we'll see you next time for more of this week in futures options This Week in Futures Options is brought to you by QuickStrike, options pricing and analysis software. QuickStrike offers powerful and flexible options analysis and pricing tools via an easy-to-use web-based interface. View prices on outright options or spreads with comprehensive page-level analysis controls. Build trades, manage risk, or explore historical volatility. 
Quick Strike has you covered with market data reports ranging from open interest to the term structure of volatility. Quick Strike is the perfect addition to your trading toolkit. Learn more about Quick Strike at bantix.com. That's B A N T I X.com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Quick Strike One. That's Q U I K S T R I K E One. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. 